Hello and welcome to Field Notes. Recently, pop culture has developed a fascination with forensic anthropologists. And there's one fairly popular one we all have probably heard of, Dr. Temperance Brennan. And obviously, Bones is a very realistic depiction of what a forensic anthropologist does. So, like many things, we can't rely on the media to show us what these people actually do. So, where should we look? Right here! So while I do tend to give Dr. Brennan a hard time, there is an element of truth in what she does. You are commonly looking at dead people. Really dead people. A lot of what we imagine a forensic anthropologist does is assist police. And while some of the time that is true, they also tend to be employed by museums or universities as researchers. In general, a forensic anthropologist is someone who studies bones. And while it's not to the technological height that Dr. Brennan depicts, you can tell certain things from bones. And this includes sex, stature, age range, and a possible ancestry. First, so you want to be a forensic anthropologist, what do you have to do? Well, if you love school, I've got great news. If you don't like school, I've got some bad news. Most jobs will require a master's in forensic anthropology or a related subcategory, like forensic odontology, which studies teeth, or forensic pathology, which is the actual study of cause of death. However, you will find the field incredibly competitive, so to maintain your own competitiveness, you will oftentimes want to pursue a PhD. Now, if school isn't really your thing, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't work in forensic. Here are two videos that I have found. This guy is a teacher who discusses a lot of the forensics jobs that are more related to criminology, while this playlist is one that was put out by the government of Australia and talks about different forensics jobs, some which do actually require more school. Outside of school, there is yet another layer of certification that you can complete, and this is to become a diplomat of the American Board of Forensic Anthropology. This is based on professional and academic achievements and requires more testing and a practical exam and continued education in the field. This board functions much like other methods medical and scientific boards, and just like after you get your medical doctorate, you get a bunch of fancy letters to put behind your name. So why would somebody say the coroner or the police call a forensic anthropologist? Well, this all has to do with the condition of the remains. Since forensic anthropologists study bones, the body either has to be completely skeletonized or so badly decomposed that the only useful part is the skeleton. Despite what we may see on TV, forensic anthropologists are helpers to police they do not solve the crimes. This job is a highly cooperative one. You're not only going to be working with police, but also entomologists, pathologists, odontologists, and many other specialists. However, while you may be working closely with police, you should not be receiving too much information about a case. In fact, too much information before you complete an exam will be seen as biased. Let's say the police are looking for someone that they believe to have been murdered. If you as the forensic anthropologist already know who they are looking for and what they are expecting to find, you may, consciously or not, skew your results in one way or another. It is important to note that the anthropologist has to stay unbiased. You are, at the base of it, a scientist. So we can really break this job into a few main parts. One is research, which takes up most of your time and is different than what a lot of people think you do. And then when you are working with police, there is a recovery, an exam, and then the results. In recovery, you'll be working with law enforcement to find and recover human remains. Sometimes you even get to work with doggies. Your job here is to make sure you aren't damaging or missing pieces that might lead to a more complete picture of the situation or the individual. The examination is probably what most people think you do. In the exam, you are trying to, in a sense, read the bones. Here you will be determining an age range, stature, sex, possible ancestry, as well as how long the individual has been dead, otherwise known as the post-mortem interval. The post-mortem interval is important because if the police are looking for someone who is recently dead and they find a body, and the body has been dead for over 100 years, this is not the person they're looking for. Aside from those, you will also be looking for and recording other defining features. This could be a childhood break, a disease that leaves marks on the bone, or a hip replacement, because they have serial numbers. Or other breaks or marks on the bone that could have resulted in trauma or death. There isn't really a black or white in this case. A lot of these factors lie on a scale. Just because their bones say one thing, that could have nothing to do with how the individual saw themselves. Once you have finished your exam, you will compile all your results into a report and hand it to the police. Once you have done this, there is one final part of the investigation that you can be a part of, and this is a trial. You could be called as the expert witness and walk people through why why you did what you did and how you got to the result. Which leads me to a very important piece of information. Do not go outside your area of expertise. It is always best if you have a field of researchers supporting what you are saying, as well as your own certifications to prove you know what you're doing. If you were not a forensic odontologist, do not do things a forensic odontologist would do. And be honest with people what you can and cannot be expected to do. The threat of court is really what makes me shy away from being a forensic anthropologist. I basically love every other part of it, except for the court part. But some of the professors that I admired the most 
most that the their least favorite part was court and that they even left thinking that they knew nothing. So those are some of the basics of a forensic anthropology job. Is there something in particular that catches your attention? How would you deal with court and somebody trying to constantly trip you up? Leave me a comment down below. Remember to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you would like to see more and I will see you next time. This is not the body you were looking for. No, they won't. <laughs> You think you are some kind of Jedi waving your hands around like that? <laughs> That's right. A lot will go back to teach because it provides yet another, yet another, as though we're like forensic anthropologists are just banking it. <laughs>